Welcome back now for the news in detail. We begin with Afghanistan, where President Ashraf Ghani is poised to win a second five-year term in the office. His main opponent and country's chief executive, Abdullah Abdullah, has secured just under 40% votes. The Independent Election Commission's preliminary results show Ghani leading with 50.6% votes. The commission said it had carried out its duty with honesty and responsibility. Abdullah's campaign said it will contest the results, while Gulbuddin Hikmatyar's team had rejected the results before today's notice. Poll results were originally due on October 19th, but were repeatedly delayed amid technical issues and allegations of fraud. Moving on to India, where 17 people have been killed in Uttar Pradesh in violent protests against the controversial Citizenship Act. This brings the death toll to 25 in over a week of unrest sparked by the contentious laws that grants nationality only to non-Muslim immigrants. The Indian government has shut down the internet in Delhi, Lucknow, Kanpur, Meerut and 18 other cities of Uttar Pradesh. In Delhi, police arrested 40 people, including eight minors, from a massive protest outside Jama Masjid. Meanwhile, after West Bengal, the Indian states of Kerala and Bihar have opposed the new law and put it on hold. The states have cited apprehension among the general public about its consequences. Meanwhile, Pakistan has rejected India's claim of a major exchange of fire in Kiran and Neelam Valley along the line of control. Pakistan's military said it is befittingly responding to the intermittent ceasefire violations by Indian Army along the line of control. The military spokesperson, Mr. Major General Asif Khafur, said Pakistan Army has responded to unprovoked Indian aggression in the Eva sector. He said there were reports of heavy casualties and damage to army posts on the Indian side. The spokesperson's statement followed a claim by the Indian media that heavy exchange of fire had taken place along the line of control. Moving on, Khalifa Haftar's Libyan National Army claims to have seized a Turkish ship to search and verify its cargo. In a statement, LNA said Grenada flagged ship was taken to the port of Ras al Hilal near the eastern city of Darna. Meanwhile, the UN recognized government of national record said three people were killed in drones drone attacks in east of Tripoli. It said UAE operated drones carried out ten airstrikes on the town of Masalata. Earlier, the Turkish parliament approved a security and military cooperation deal with the Tripoli based government. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has said Ankara is ready to send troops to Libya, but no request has been made by the GNA. In Somalia, a suicide car bomb attack has killed seven people and wounded dozens in the north central town of Galkayo. Somali military said the bomb went off outside a hotel where senior, where senior military officials were staying. It said the driver had failed to enter the hotel compound and instead hit a military pickup parked outside as a barrier. No one has yet claimed responsibility for the attack. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has briefed the outcome of his talks with Iranian President Hassan Rouhani to U.S. President Donald Trump. White House says Trump spoke over the phone with Abe about developments related to North Korea, Iran and trade. Abe told Trump that Japan will continue diplomatic efforts to ease tensions in the Middle East. He said Tokyo wants to urge North Korea to work for denuclearization through peaceful dialogue. The two sides agreed to continue close communication and coordination in light of recent threats issued by Yongyang. The phone conversation lasted about 75 minutes and came a day after Abe held talks with Rouhani in Tokyo. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson says the UK hopes to have better relations with Russia. In an interview, Johnson said, London expects to improve commercial relations and enhance trade volume with Moscow. Johnson is on a one-day visit to Estonia to meet with the British soldiers serving in the Baltic country. Praising NATO, he said it has been the most successful military alliance of the past five centuries and has a great future. 
He also said the country wants to move past Brexit. What everybody wants to do is put Brexit behind us on January the 31st, then move on. And there's a lot of goodwill, a lot of energy now by building the, the new deep and special partnership, and that's what we're going to do. The UK, US and the Allies have been rotating troops through NATO members Estonia, Lithuania, Latvia and Poland. Moving on, Croatians are voting today for a new president just days before the country takes over the European Union presidency for the first time. Eleven candidates are running in the election, but opinion polls suggest a tight three-way race. The country's first female president, Kolinda Grabar Kitrovic, is running for a second term. She faces a challenge from right-wing folk singer-turned-politician Miroslav Skoro and former leftist Prime Minister Zoran Milanovic. President in Croatia is the ceremonial head of state as the prime minister holds majority of the executive powers. Uzbekistan is heading to polls today in its first parliamentary election under reformist president Shafkat Mirziyoyev. 150 seats in the lower house are up for grabs where no party has ever achieved a majority. 20 million people are eligible to vote in Central Asia's most populous country that is home to 33 million people. The lower house has a long-earned rubber stamp reputation as all five parties competing support the president. Mirziyoyev replaced long-standing president Islam Karimov in 2016 and reversed many of his authoritarian measures. In Cuba, Manuel Marrero Cruz has been named as first prime minister in more than 40 years. President Miguel Diaz Canel appointed Marrero to the post scrapped in 1976 by the revolutionary leader Fidel Castro. The position was reinstated under a new constitution passed earlier this year. Marrero's appointment as head of the government is part of decentralization process and generational change from the revolutionary old guard. He has been serving as tourism minister for 15 years. The position of prime minister was last held by Fidel Castro in 1976. Moving on to Honduras, where 18 inmates have been killed while 16 are injured in clashes at a jail in northern port town of Tila. The National Penitentiary Institute said 17 victims died at the facility while another died in the hospital. Prison spokesperson said several inmates were armed with guns that slowed down the operation. Security officials seized five 9mm guns and ammunition from the inmates. Honduras has recently seen a spike in prison killings. Earlier on Tuesday, President Juan Orlando Hernandez ordered the army to take over the country's 27 prisons. In the U.S., six people have died and 13 others were injured in a fire at a building in downtown Las Vegas. Fire officials said the place displaced over 35 people. Now, authorities say the accidental fire started around a stove in one of the apartment's first floor. Officials say damage is currently estimated to be at $475,000. Las Vegas authorities are calling it the deadliest fire in the city's history. A scorching heat wave has intensified the bushfires ravaging Australia. Temperatures are expected to peak at 47 degrees Celsius in New South Wales and West Sydney. Fire department officials said an expected wind change would aggravate the already catastrophic conditions. Officials say only rain can help them control the onslaught of bushfires. Sydney is shrouded in toxic smoke as blazes flare just 130 kilometers from the country's largest city. Fires have burned over 7 million hectares of land, killing 10 people and destroying over 800 homes. Welcome back. Now in Poland, artists have created a miniature town out of gingerbread. The elaborate cookie creation features 273 houses, a church and a castle. Details on Sweet Christmas in this report. 
This city is home to hundreds of gingerbread people. The wonderful aroma of ginger and cinnamon this work of art gives off is a Christmas treat in itself. It took three bakers in Poland's Gliwice four months to create this masterpiece. Take 300 eggs, 66 pounds of sugar and 26 gallons of honey. Mix it all, add coloring and have three people sugar coat it. You'll get it done. The impressive castle is made of over 3,500 gingerbread bricks. The gingerbread wonderland is on display until 28th February. In the South Atlantic Ocean, scientists are on a mission to search for an underwater mountain called Mount Vima. The marine life here is rumored to be flourishing after an extensive ban on fishing. This Greenpeace research mission is part of the UN Treaty to Preserve the Oceans. More about the revival of Mount Vima in this report. They're often called sea wolves, nomads who live most of their lives on the ocean. These are the dedicated volunteers who work on board the Greenpeace ships. The seamount rises 4,600 meters from the ocean floor up to around 20 meters below the water's surface. A fishing ban was put in place at Mount Vima in 2007 in the hope it would allow the marine life time to recover. And it has. Greenpeace expedition team leader and marine biologist Tilo Mack has been an activist for 20 years, but he also joins in some of the dives to get a first-hand look at the seamount. I think this is just the perfect example of what happens if you leave nature on its own for a certain period of time, even if it was overfished, it will replenish shortly. Environmental victories like these are exactly the reason Barry keeps going. If they tell me, Greenpeace tells me tomorrow that there's no more money, there's no more funds to pay me a salary, I would still keep on doing exactly what I'm doing now. No doubt about it. Life at sea might be tough at times, but for these volunteers, conservation isn't just a job. It's a call for change and a search for meaning. And now a look uh, at the world of business. U.S. President Donald Trump has said the United States and China will sign the phase one trade deal soon. The deal was announced earlier this month to end the trade war between the world's largest economies. Earlier, Trump and his Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping discussed the partial resolution of the trade dispute. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin said the pact will be signed in early January as the deal was undergoing a technical review. Addressing a conservative student summit in Florida, Trump said his tough stance with China had yielded the breakthrough in trade talks. We also took the toughest ever action against China. And as a result, we just achieved a breakthrough on the trade deal and we'll be signing it very shortly. They're already buying billions and billions of dollars of products, agricultural products. For And now let's take a look at how the weather is faring across the globe. And that's all for now. For the latest updates, you can follow us on social media at Indus.news. Thank you for watching.